Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our version of A Bird's Nest for our inaugural edition of Cardinal Chat. This is a show where we get into uh, different areas of South Laurel High School, athletics, academics, fine arts, whatever uh, makes the, the Cardinals tick over at South Laurel High School. And again, this is our, our inaugural uh, show, and we plan to do many more. And so it may not be the best right now, folks, but we're learning, and uh, we'll get better as each show goes on. Uh, one word out there before we get started, if you are interested, uh, anybody watching this and interested would like to uh, provide sponsorship for this and other things that we're going to be doing here this season, you can contact Coach uh, Chris Souter uh, of the girls basketball team right there, and uh, he'll be glad to talk to you about that. Uh, before we go on, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Steve Black. I am the new voice of South Laurel Athletics, uh, basketball uh, more uh, specifically, but other things going on as well. And uh, my guest this inaugural edition will be the head basketball coach uh, on the uh, boys' side, Coach Jeff Davis. And of course, I mentioned uh, Coach Souter of the girls' basketball team as well. Gentlemen, welcome to Cardinal Chat. Thanks for being here, man. Yeah, appreciate it. Looking forward to it. This is going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And again, we've got some other things planned. And as we get more uh, information and get more into it, we'll let you know uh, as we go along. And we hope you have fun watching it as we're having fun uh, doing this uh, on this day. We'll go ahead and get started. We'll just have different topics that we'll talk about uh, each and every week. And it all evolves around the Cardinals of South Laurel High School. And so the first thing we want to do uh, this, uh, I guess, during the show, well, it's 2020, folks. I guess uh, not a lot's been happening this year, right? Uh, what are we wearing? I don't know. Apparently, you gotta you got to wear these things. right? I, I was getting ready to go into surgery here in a moment. I don't know. I don't like it. They kind of like us to coach in these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no kidding. Well, folks, if you've been under a rock this year, you know everything has been going on with the pandemic and the COVID virus and all that. And, of course, uh, that it translated to the different ways of doing things in regards to schools and, and how you're doing the, the classes this year as well as uh, athletics and everything as well going on here uh, in the state. But we want to talk about some different COVID issues that affect South Laurel High School. And one of the topics that we wanted to talk about, uh, really, Coach Davis, we'll start with you, but... How is everything going so far over at the high school now as we, you know, we had the, the pandemic in March and things kind of got to a halt. Uh, everybody was doing their classes online, but the fall has come back and, and a new school year has started. But what's happening over south in regards to classes? We're in a hybrid model. Um, kids can do virtually online or they can be in person at school. Um, the school it looks different than normal, just like everything else, but the kids have been great. The teachers have been awesome uh, at juggling online and in person. The administration has, has done a great job of providing that leadership to make sure everything goes smoothly. And we really, uh, things could, couldn't go as smoothly. And this all started with him, just so you know. <laughs> it all started with him in March. So, you know, they win the game at Rupp and then... Everybody, I think that started the, that started they, the pandemic, right? They were the last sport. Well, we play. probably shocked everybody that we won. We started the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, I, I echo what he's saying is that you know my wife's an elementary teacher, so I know what she's gone through. And people that aren't in the education profession don't understand how hard this is on teachers and administrators. And I'm retired, so I get to work three days a week and just kind of show up. Uh, so, but, you know, I'm the same way I commend Mr. Kidd and all those administrators and these teachers and just watching my wife at home, what she goes through, the different stress levels that she's never gone through and she's a veteran teacher. So the, the fact that these teachers are doing what they're doing is, is remarkable. And, uh, and you, you know, you speak about the teachers and the administration, you know, the main thing is the students. And I know that especially in the spring, uh, a lot of, a lot of schools were very creative, how they did their graduations, you know, for their seniors, uh, South, no different in that, but. How, how are the students doing so far with everything that's going on with Coach Souter? Well, I'm, like I said, I'm only there Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, but I've told my wife at the high school, um, you know, a school that size with 1,200 students or so, uh, I, I've just always been impressed with how quiet the hallways are and uh, how organized everything is and how neat and clean. And this year, it's, it seems like it's even more, you know, of course, the, the sanitizing everything is important, but it's just, it's so quiet and um, so, like I said, it's just, it's impressive to walk in there. Very good. Now, we talk about the academic side of things, but uh, we'll go ahead and venture over to the athletic side of things, because again, we, we were able to get some fall sports uh, here in the state of Kentucky, uh, kind of abridged, if you will, when it comes to uh, audience participation and things like that. Uh, Coach Davis, how, 
How, how have you seen that so far with, with the fall sports that's been going on and everything happening with the, the, the different protocols? What's, what's been different? I just, the temperature checks, the vouchers to get into games, the mask wearing, all that stuff is, it, it's new. It's, it's the new normal, as everybody says, but uh, it, I'm just glad that we have the opportunity to, to play and the fans have an opportunity, especially the parents and the grandparents, to be able to watch the kids play. Uh, because at one point we didn't know if we were going to play or if you were allowed to have anybody in the stands. And it goes back to March when the girls, you know, in that last game, you heard everything from each player's only going to get two tickets and now we're not going to let anybody in and play the tournament. And fast forward now, I, I think it all depends on what area of the state you're in and how everybody interprets everything, just like how you interpret uh, the daily rate. I mean, there's... 18 different math models of sport, <laughs> but it, it's gone smoothly. I, it's different, but I think we, our athletic director, Ryan Nolan, and our administration has really uh, put a plan together, and it's worked out so far. Excellent. Now, uh, in, in talking along those lines, uh, Coach Souter, uh, what I, I think we heard something here just recently about, I mean, I guess the upcoming winter sports, and again, for you all, basketball. So, uh, looks like there may be some different types of protocols when it comes to uh, people coming out to the games. Do you have any information on that? Not a whole lot other than it's still kind of up in the air, and it may depend on the size of your gym, how many, you know, the capacity, and, you know, we're hearing percentages, we're hearing a certain number of vouchers, um, you know, and, you know, so that's going to be hard, you know, when, you, when you're playing a big ball game and everybody wants in, uh, and me being at South, this is just my third season, you know, uh, we get great crowds. So that's going to be a challenge, um, and uh, you know all these kids want to play in front of fans. I mean, it you know it, it gets the kids fired up. But uh, like I said, that's the new normal. So you know if it's if it's a percentage, um, you know once again I envy the administration trying to figure out the best way to do this and and not have people upset. And I know it's very tough. You know people want to come out and support their teams. You know all across the state, and you know ultimately you know these this is for the the kids that are playing these sports, again, they, they get the most out of that. But I know family, friends really want to watch them and then support them. So, you know, you, you got to do the best you can with everything you have. But there's a lot of people that just like going to games. Yeah. I mean, especially in the 13th region, the Facebook that you and Les have created, I mean, it, that's a monster to begin with. We won't go there. Um, but <laughs> I will give total credit to Les. I, I'm just a contributor. It's all Les Dixon on that. We're trying to figure out how many voters there are. That's <laughs> but anyway... There's so many people that follow the sports in this area, and they have no connection to teams. And you'll see the same people going to all these games, a Corbin Knox game or South North, uh, Corbin South, whatever, just to go. Now you have to have vouchers, and you're really cutting those people out. And we understand, but it, it's it's just a it's, a sad situation right now. Well, and you're talking about too. You know, they're talking about maybe you could stream games and things like that. Well, your older fans, your your fans that that your loyal fans that are there every year. You know, some of them are not going to want to do that. I mean, I wouldn't want to do that. No. You know, to watch a game that's streamed. I'd want to be in person. Is it's not the same. So it is. It's there's some challenges ahead of how we're going to do this. But I'm like Coach Davis. I'm just glad right right now today that we have the opportunity to think we think we're going to have a season. Very good. Now, I know practice, uh, normal time has been moved back. When when do you guys officially get to start practicing? October 26th. October 26th. Date now. Um, and we tell our kids every single day, this is today. Tomorrow could be something different. And uh, we saw that with the fall sports. Every time it was just a backup, backup situation. And they're everybody's doing their best to try to make their, everything work and it's looking like that we're going to play October 26th or first practice there will be no scrimmages this year and the first uh, game can start November 23rd I think right. so it's the week of Thanksgiving and that's interesting because I know usually the season starts the week after Thanksgiving is a little adjustment this year uh, with that now even though you're waiting to have practice you all are doing conditioning I, I know I've seen, I've seen some video online are already doing conditioning uh, at the school, so how's that been going so far? Well, right, we're doing conditioning, we're going hard, both teams are, and uh, we're trying to do a lot of things outside, and we're trying to follow those protocols, you know, the temperature checks every day, and uh, trying to limit sharing basketballs and doing all those things that we can do, sanitizing, and 
and you know all those things all the time and but our kids are we're in the weight room we're working hard and trying to get prepared the best we can uh, but I'm like Coach Davis, we tell our kids the same thing is that, yeah, 26 is the new October 15th, but, you know, uh, the way things are going, you never know. One day I feel really good about it, we're going to start, and then the next day I look and it's like, oh, my gosh, I don't know if we're going to start it. <laughs> so it's just kind of, it is, it's daily. Uh, and that's the thing, and I, even in my regular job, it's a, it's a fluid situation. You have a regular Every, job? I have a regular job, yes. <laughs> I thought that's you, what you were saying. You guys don't pay me enough, so, okay, okay. so but, uh, you know, I have, to, I have to work for a living here, but... You know, in all of our jobs, it's fluid. Every day is a challenge, and you know, it, you, there's a lot of comings and goings and cancellations and things like that. So it's just yeah. got to roll with the punches, if you will. Exactly right. Now, speaking of COVID, there's a something that changed for basketball. If you guys want to talk about this for a moment, I know it, it got some interesting banter online. But when it comes to actually starting the basketball game, instead of the traditional jump ball, we're gonna have a coin toss and. Uh, is, is, that a, is that a big deal, no deal, or some deal? I mean, There's what a do you, coin shortage, right? Well, that's what they talked about, you know, in the year, a coin shortage, you know, but I'm sure we've got some coins back in, in reserve just in yeah. case, but is it really a big deal? Or uh, When I first saw it, I thought, this is silly, um, you know, of all the things, but then when you read it, they do it more for the officials so they can have social distance from players, so I get that part, and then I think I really sit back and think of, like, you know, I don't care what we do as long as we're getting to play. There you go. Uh, so that's kind of where we switched uh, switched my gears to. And we haven't even talked about it with the kids. And um, I didn't want to ever meet jump balls anyway, so maybe I'll have better luck with the coin toss. <laughs> uh, and that's what I was wondering. Do the officials toss it? Do we get to have an honorary coin tosser? <laughs> Uh, we might get you one game. Well, that, that's fine. We can go to midcourt, you know, yeah. be all mic'd that's up. That's right, yeah. Can you defer? That's the question. I <laughs> defer to the second half. Fourth quarter. Right? Or, well, four, there you go, fourth quarter. Well, that's another thing I was asking is, is that we were talking about that, is that now can you choose, like the home team calls, right? Correct? Correct. Yep. All right, home team calls. Does the visiting team get to say, all right, I want this in like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, I tell you. And you have to have three balls, basketballs. So you have to have two at the scores table. Really? Okay. And they interchange them throughout the quarters. I mean, it's funny. The rules are serious. I, we understand that. We do. When you first see all these rules and protocols, it's just like when we got these first mandates of everything else, it's kind of comical when you see it. But then you, when you get down and you really sit and think about it, it is to protect people. We sure. Right. And, that, and that's the bottom line is that but one thing I, you know, I thought of, you know, I was like, why the coin toss? And I think, okay, why not, like the home team, you know, pick a kid, hit a free throw. If you hit it, you get it. If you miss it, you get it. You know, there you go. Like that. No pressure right Yeah, there. no pressure. Like, hey, it's, it's good work on that's what you do on the That's what you do on the That's right. You do it on the playground anyway, yeah, right? right. Yeah, there you go. Hey, let's shoot for it. Okay, right. I got the ball, all right? Are we going to bring back the peach baskets, though, too? You know, like, <laughs> <laughs> we're probably old enough for that, right? Yeah. Okay, we're not going to show our ages on that. But uh, that will be interesting to see. But I think, you know, all in all, again, as you talked about, it, it doesn't matter what you do. It's, it's, the kids get a chance to play and compete because, uh, you know, be it athletics, be it academics, be it fine arts, you know, kids at this level get a chance to uh, take part in whatever they're doing. It enriches their lives. When you speak about fine arts, you think about our band. They lost. Award-winning I band. mean, they lost. Their, they lost. Back-to-back -back state champions, they're not even getting to participate in that state championship this year. Well, and the cool thing about that is, being our assistant, my assistant coach Greg Evers was talking about this the other day. You know, they didn't have the comp marching competition. They are out there every night, yes. still practicing. It's dark, and they're still out there. So, no wonder our band is awesome. I mean, the time yes. that band that they put in, and I love it. And I know he does too. When the band comes to our game, it's just a different atmosphere. So, I'm hoping they even get to be a part of this. Well, being a former band person myself, I was a trumpet player in high school, but Middlesbrough High School, MHS, is the best. But I know, I know this Cardinal chat, but uh, I, was a, I was a Middlesbrough Yellow Jacket. But, yeah, we, I can appreciate that, especially from the band. It was, it was always fun to do and, and support the, the teams and things yeah. like that. Uh, okay, well, I think uh, any final thoughts right now when it comes to COVID? We can go into some different topics here uh, on, on our chat. But uh, I think uh, it seems like you've got everything under control. It seems like... I think schools we within the well, it's, you're, it's it's a, the administration. <laughs> yeah, <they have> <laughs> okay. Excellent. Well, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll talk about a couple of other uh, uh, items here uh, on our inaugural show. But um, I guess we'll we'll focus on athletics. Uh, Coach, you were talking about maybe a media guide. You wanted to kind of give a chance to kind of plug that 
here on our inaugural show. Well, I'll kind of let Coach Davis take that. He's the one that kind of came up with the idea, so I'll let him. I mean, we're doing it jointly, but it was kind of his idea to, to get it going. I think it's a great idea, and so far it's going great, so I'll kind of let him plug that. Our media guy, we've stole the idea of all other people, and in this time with COVID and it's, you know, funding for every business is tough right now, you know, with the pandemic and everything. And we were just trying to come up with different ways that we could help support and give them more advertising uh, for this year and hopefully build on it and also give our kids something else uh, that they can have as a memory going on. So um, it's just an introduction and a, it's eventually hopefully get to where we can add history to this thing and, and make it because we we're celebrating 50 years of uh, Laurel County High School slash South Laurel High School and you think that campus is 50 years old mm. this year and, and what a way to you know to implement that and celebrate that and uh, it's just a way and like I said to give the businesses another a physical hand of people look and see the businesses and they've been great in our I've been here 10 years now and our local businesses have supported us through thick and thin, and we're just trying to add more to their value of supporting and help them uh, get back on track. Very good. So if anybody out there is watching this and be wanting to do some sponsorship there with Media Guides, Coach Davis, how's that? <laughs> well, so we'll give it to you now, right? right. We'll so just pass <laughs> we'll just pass, a, pass around the fun in that. But uh, thank you very much. And so, again, uh, upcoming Media Guide, that would be kind of interesting to see, especially a lot of history, and that's that's the thing about these schools. You know, there's a lot of history in that, and and some schools are really good at promoting that history, and it's really neat to okay. have. And I'll be honest with you, and you know, when I left, when I was at Mercer County, and before I took this job, and you know, in November of a couple years ago, is is that one of the things that intrigued me was how tradition rich the girls' basketball program was in Laurel County. So that was what probably piqued my interest more than anywhere. I want to go somewhere where it was tradition rich. And, you know, when you look at that wall back there, you can't help but be in awe when you walk in that gym. So, um, you know, and being 50 years, too, I didn't really know that till I heard Mr. Kidd talking about it. That's really neat. And, and like Coach Davis said, this is a great time to get that media guide going and, and hopefully build on that and, and really let people know about the history of our school and, and the tradition. I have to show our kids every now and then, our girls' team, is, is that they're so young. It's like, well, we're going to look at this wall today and, you know, what you're playing for. You know, you're not just playing for this year's team. You know, you got a lot of tradition to uphold. So, I mean, it's just really cool when you walk in that gym. One of the coolest walls, I mean, in gyms, you walk in and see those pictures, and you know those people have uh, earned something really, really special, and to be put on a wall with your picture and banner is something. And like you said, a lot of our younger kids come in for camps and stuff, and they're, they're up there pointing, and... And they want to get on the wall. Sure. And that's something they shoot for when they're young. And that's just part of the tradition. Excellent. So, uh, again, if you're interested in sponsoring that, just contact Coach Davis. And uh, uh, he'll, uh, he'll give you, put you in the right direction and help to get that going soon. Now, speaking of another plug, the plan here is uh, you'll see this hopefully before the end of the week. Uh, on uh, social media, I believe Facebook, is that correct? We're going to try to put it on social media. We're going to try to. There you go. So in saying that, Coach Souter, I want to give you a chance to plug an event you're having this weekend and kind of a, I guess, fundraiser in support of your, your basketball program. So go ahead and take it away. Yeah, and, uh, we're going to ha host a uh, golf scramble this Saturday. Uh, registration is 8.30 to 9.30 with a shotgun start at 10 a.m. at the London Country Club. Uh, we kind of threw this together pretty quick. Um, but it's been, once again, like Coach Davis says, this community is incredible in terms of support, uh, getting whole sponsors. But we still got room for teams. Uh, just contact me, and uh, we'll get to make sure you get in there. It'll be a fun morning of, of golf. Might be a little, put your little golf sweater on and be ready to go. <laughs> might be, it might be chilly this might weekend, be, right? Uh, so. Now, when you say shotgun start, you're not actually using an actual shotgun, right? I, don't think I, know, I know people know golf, know what that's talking about. There. I, play, I play the social distancing golf. Like, I'm never around anybody. Yeah, that's the way I would be. <laughs> kind of, you're kind of in the weeds, right? I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I've been there, too. <laughs> so, again, uh, this weekend, uh, golf scramble, again, in support of the girls' basketball program. So, get a chance to check that out. Uh, i got one more topic before we kind of start wrapping up, and I know that Sometimes on, on Cardinal Chat, we'll, you know, we'll talk about serious things, and then I guess we'll get kind of silly, and, and uh, yours truly thinks this is kind of silly, 
but you might not think this is silly, but one of the topics that they came up with for our first show was the great debate. And we're not talking about the presidential debate or the vice presidential <laughs> debate and all that stuff's going on. The great debate out there, folks, uh, is, is it MJ or is it LeBron? So, Coach Souter, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a first crack at this. So, that's all everybody talks about, right? If you follow basketball, that's all you talk about, LeBron, MJ. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, I've been in a lot of arguments about that. <laughs> uh, in fact, two years ago at the state tournament, I was asking Brad Marcy, former assistant. <laughs> uh, I'm not calling names. Not, yeah, name dropping here, about, folks. Name uh, dropping. And he'll watch this. Uh, I was actually going to random people to state tournament. I was taking a poll. Uh, of course, I'm older. I'm old school, so naturally I think uh, Michael Jordan is the GOAT. Uh, I think LeBron is a great player. Uh, but I just watching him, that generation, especially after watching The Last Dance, uh, how <laughs> yeah. tough that generation was. Yeah. You know, he got fouled. You know, you know, they, they would even say, don't let him leave his feet. Um, and I don't know, even though LeBron is a monster, uh, size-wise and, and ability-wise, I don't know that he could have handled the, you know, the physical abuse because um, he gets, of course, he, you know, he's just gotten into habit. I think every time he throws his hands up, every time it's. And don't get me wrong, he's a great player, and and he's he's definitely, in, he would be in my top five. But I just think he's going to watch this. You know, yeah, he that. probably will. I'll get, yeah, he probably will. Uh, but I'm I'm a Michael Jordan guy. I hear you. And so you know, you're talking about. You talk about the style of play back in the day, if you will, like in Jordan's day. You know, nobody flopped or anything. They just knocked you down, right? Yeah, right. And you just went on and played. Now, these days, it seems like more uh, of a flopping. Coach Davis, your thoughts on this. Are you, a, are you an MJ guy or are you a LeBron guy? I grew up as an MJ fan. <laughs> okay. But, oh. but I respect what LeBron has done in the NBA. You look at the, some of the teams, especially the one in Cleveland, uh, leading them to a championship, even though the Warriors had a bunch of people hurt. Um, he has done some things that I don't know many can do. Well, where I lost a little, little respect for him was after this last one, when he made the comment, I demand the respect. I won't say the word he said. Yeah. I never once heard Michael Jordan, Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Kareem. I never heard them say, I demand the respect now. And I think that's where the difference between the two are. Michael played in six finals, 6-0. and up. Set out a year and a half to play baseball and came back <laughs> and still had it. And what people, I think what the younger generation don't understand, don't really understand. They didn't get to watch it, what Michael had to go through. Hand checking back in the day was a tool. Now it's a foul. Yeah. And Michael played three years of college. Yeah. LeBron did. Yeah. So that, who says that Michael, you know, that wear and tear in college is a, a lot too. So I'm, I'm with Stephen A. Smith, which I don't agree with everything he says. He's name dropping Stephen A. Uh, <laughs> uh, He's going to watch yeah, his show he's too. Watching this too. He's yeah. watching. He made the uh, comment of, LeBron will not be the GOAT until he gets rid of those six final losses. <laughs> Just saying. Well, let me throw this out here, kind of a, uh, I don't know, I want to say devil's advocate or whatever, but, you know, you're talking, right? you're talk but you were talking about the respect and things like that. You know, with LeBron in this era, what what's prevalent in this era? Social media. You didn't have that back in Jordan's day. And you mentioned some other names, again, back in the day. Now, if you had the social media as fierce as it is today back then, do you think, uh, you think it would have been different for people like Jordan and things like that? Because I think with social media these days, there's a lot of pressure on someone like LeBron. Again, not necessarily well, agreeing with what he said, but again, just you. looking at a different slant. I agree with you somewhat, but you, if you watch The Last Dance, Michael got mad at a reporter, newspaper reporter, for making a suggestion and he fueled that to go out and prove not only to him but everybody else that he was this good and so you don't get the newspaper in your face traveling with you as much it's all social media I get sometimes the social media is you can wave that off and like well that's so and so saying it when you have a guy at every one of your games writing critiquing everything. I don't know how this generation would handle that. 
Sure. My son is, uh, of course, he's 22, and he's he likes Michael Jordan better, but he likes to argue with me. Uh, so his argument basically is is that okay, LeBron is physically and his physique could still dominate back in that era because of his size. Could Michael Jordan would he dominate? You know, because of his physical stature today, you know, he's it's not like he's some Amazon, you know. Um, so, and it's generational, it is, and I get that. Um, and then his argument is, okay, if you go by rings, then there's people above that have won more rings than him. Bill Russell. Bill Russell has won, what, 10 or whatever now. Roger Ory has, has, has Well, yeah, right. big shot Rob. Right, so. It now is, name dropping, uh, the yeah. late names. Sorry. And I, after watching The Last Dance, too, I, I have a, a different level of respect for Michael Jordan of how intense that man was every day. You know, if you weren't working hard, you probably weren't going to be on that team. And sure, in practice. In practice, yes, that's what I'm talking about. You probably weren't on that team. So it was, um, and don't get me wrong, LeBron James is, he's great, um, and he'll, but I still, he would be in my top five. I don't even think I'd put him at two. Uh, but um, that's, <laughs> and my son gets mad at me, but I was like, well, you're not going to change my mind. So. Well, and, and this debate will never end. I think it's just. No, not, <laughs> not at all. And but there will be the next player, oh, sure. the next generation, sure. and they'll, yeah, it's always going to be that way. So, but it's always, uh, I guess, uh, fun to talk about. It's always fun to see on social media. Kind of like this Pete Rose going in the Hall of Fame. Well, there's another one. That could be another topic for another uh, yeah. time, right? Especially to tell you. Yeah. So, uh, interesting stuff. So, uh, before we wrap it up, I thought we would just have a chance to kind of talk a little bit about what we're doing here. Now, again, we're not gonna we're not gonna give it all away here, folks, because it's still a work in progress. But uh, again, uh, what are we looking to, to get out of something like this? Again, the, uh, really the promotion of South Laurel High School in the areas of athletics, academics, fine arts, what have you. We, we just want to make sure we get more information and showcase more people in our schools, teachers, students, supporters, everybody. And it's just to promote our school uh, in a new way. Um, you know, we haven't had that systems in place and we've got this great place at CFI with this great studio and why not take advantage of it you know Shane Smith has been awesome and really helping us uh, get this ball rolling and as yourself uh, so we're just trying to promote our school and, and not make it about this one thing we're, we're trying to get everybody and get more things out there and like fall sports so feeding the cow and the, you know two times, should have been three times if it wasn't for the pandemic, and uh, and just some great things going on that people don't normally get to see, so uh, that's what we're looking to try to do. Excellent, and I know that over, you know, over the next few weeks with this, you know, we're going to promote, you know, again, different areas, and, and we'll also kind of talk about the season as well. We'll have some shows devoted to that. We'll talk more about your teams, because I know there's some exciting things happening for the, you know, upcoming season uh, as well, but uh, I think that, uh, you know, um, your thoughts, uh, Coach Souter. I know one thing that I've noticed, like last year, and you both can chime in as well. But your your social media and, and a lot of you know, there's a lot of videos and things that that were done. I think came, a company came in from Lexington, and I know some of the games and stuff. You know, you see like a video stuff, and I thought that was really neat seeing that online and well done. But you know, any thoughts about what we're trying to do with this, Coach? Well, it's like you said, we're, our job. You know, and I guess the older I get, the more it hits me, is that. You know, it's winning is great and coaching is great. I love it, you know, uh, but my job is to promote these kids, these young ladies. And if by promoting these young ladies, then we're promoting our school and you're promoting your community. And that's what you want to do, um, you know, and, and we want our, our athletes, our student athletes, our students. You know, I had a principal, one of my mentors one time say, hey, we want all these kids to, to graduate and be taxpayers. And so to do that, you got different ways now. This is 2020. And like you said, the social media, any way you can get, promote your school and your athletes and, and just your students in general. Um, you know, I get asked all the time, you know, when, when I'll do something, I say, hey, I didn't know about that. You know, I probably would have, I probably would have done it or contributed. I didn't know about it. So we've got to do a better job to get those things out there. You know, um, newspapers are kind of an old thing, you know, as much as I hate to say that, you know, I grew up. Couldn't wait to go out and get the Lexington Herald every morning to look at the sports page, but now, you know, you got to get online or you got to get on Twitter or Facebook or Instagram, and 
by, by doing this show, this is another way, you know, to positively promote our school. And, you know, Mr. Kidd's big on when I got here, the first thing he did was give me a t-shirt, says, do your job. And that's part of our job, is promote this school and this community. Thank you very much, uh, both of you, for being on. And again, the, the main objective here is to promote the, the kids, the, the administration, and everyone involved with South Laurel High School and everything that we do. So next week, we'll be back with some more uh, entertaining topics, hopefully, as we uh, get more into the, the winter uh, sports, as talk a little bit more about the fall and anything else that's going on uh, South Laurel Cardinal related. So folks, again, uh, thanks for tuning in as we, uh, you see this later on this week on social media. And I think we passed the test, right? We'll get a second uh, second show. We have to wait. Oh, we got to wait. <laughs> How many likes we get? Oh, that's right. So like us on Facebook, right? <laughs> right. Give us give us a like. And again, if you want to be part of this as we start doing some different things here, uh, and uh, businesses out there want to be a part of this, contact Coach Souter, contact you know Coach Davis or, or anyone uh, at South Laurel High School. We'd love to have you as we go through and, and take care of all this. We so even put a commercial in here. Well, we, we do. We can do commercials. We just need to have sponsors, right? Yeah. yeah. So, I hey. It would be really cool, too, if you had people that want to reach out and say, hey, I got an idea for a show or a topic or there, something. See, there you great, go. You know, so. That's kind of like the, the pandemic and everything going on. It's a fluid situation, right? This right. could be a fluid show. There you go. Change I don't mind. know if that sounded right or not. I don't know. <laughs> You may flood the studio or something like that. Well, All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Well, for Coach Jeff Davis and Coach uh, Chris Souter, I'm Steve Black. And again, this has been our first edition of Cardinal Chat. Tune in next week when we'll have our second edition. Good night, folks. All right, man.